Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm doing a different video. I'm here with uh, Raquel, which is a, a lawyer working from Lisbon. And I will, uh, we will share with you today, guys, some uh, news and some uh, basic uh, information about the NHR regime. As you know, uh, me and Andrea, we have already made some video about it in our YouTube channel. But today it's more important because we will get some information from a person who is effectively working in Lisbon and is helping already a lot of people uh, moving to Portugal using this specific regime. So, Raquel, first of all, thank you for uh, this opportunity, for this video. You are a lawyer working in Lisbon, as I already said. So the first question that we ask now uh, to a Portuguese uh, person is, uh, what is the NHR regime? If you can give us some uh, basic introduction, uh, very easy explained, if you can say to us, uh, how would you define it? Good. I, Fausto, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, and I hope I can clarify some quick questions about how, living in Portugal, the NHR and the benefits involved. So starting with the NHR. Basically, it is a tax regime uh, for newcomers. So people have to, to understand that it is critical to apply for the NHR when arriving until March, the year after registering as a resident in Portugal. Uh, don't miss the deadline. Uh, it's really, really uh, crucial. Um, and the main benefits, typically, we need to analyze them per type of income, okay? We need to ask the potential client or uh, person who is uh, applying for the NHR exactly what is the type of income. Um, and based on that, determine what will be the specific benefit. For instance, pension income for pensioners wanting to relocate to Portugal. Um, the main advantage is a 10% fixed tax rate on pension income obtained abroad, outside of Portugal. Okay. Um, for passive income, like dividends, interest, royalties, this is where the main advantage really is. Uh, one of the most significant um, because you can have full exemption on dividend income and other passive income um, if um, it's considered obtained outside of Portugal from a white listed jurisdiction. So for entrepreneurs or person people who keep a business running outside of Portugal, this can be considered a very important um, personal income tax benefit for the move on professional income so for people who move to portugal and they want to work in portugal or work remotely or start a business here or act as a freelancer the main advantage of the nhr can be a reduced uh, tax rate of 20 percent mm, right. activities are illegible okay it's um still a very good tax rate considering that the normal rates in portugal are up to 53 percent so getting a fixed rate of 20 percent can be still a great opportunity for several um clients exactly that that's very interesting also this 20 percent and uh let, just to make here an example also because we have an audience mm -hmm. of people from all over the world so let's say if a person physical person moved to portugal and open a company in a, let's say uk or another uh, mm -hmm. state they mm -hmm. don't have any taxes on the dividends or they also can get the, the royalty correct so this, that would be the main yeah, it is possible uh, that the exemption um, on dividends apply for a client in the, the circumstances you just described. Of course, there are other um, relevant topics we need to assess. Uh, most as lawyers, we always need to go a little deeper exactly. and make sure that the company uh, in the UK or in any other uh, whitelisted country is um, effectively being managed managed from uh, outside of portugal that there is a, enough economic substance abroad so we are currently uh, not advising anything like shell companies or 
just mailboxes. Uh, exactly. Considering all the European um, legislations and the Portuguese legislations as well. Uh, so it's really a, a proper tax uh, planning. It's, it's advisable. Exactly. So about the okay those four is it for the tax now we mm -hmm. are in 2023 uh it's, it is one of the first video that we are releasing this year so are there any news positive or negatives that pe people need to know before even thinking to move uh, to portugal okay from a tax perspective the nhr remains uh the same so there are no changes in the regime which is very good the regime has kept the same rules more or less for over more than 10 years so it's good news and we have not seen anything changed changing now we have uh, in portugal we have now seen a crypto tax being introduced mm -hmm. which um it, it which make portugal no longer the, the tax haven for crypto but it's still a good option if you um if you hold your assets and your investments for, for more than one year in that case, uh, it remains um, not taxable in Portugal. So does this mean that even if I buy 100,000 euro in crypto mm -hmm. now, in January, mm -hmm. if I sell it in the February 2024, I don't pay any taxes? Exactly. So yes. that's, that's why, guys, this is quite interesting because I know that a lot of you, you, you invest in, uh, you have multiple type of assets, including uh, crypto. So that's very interesting. Did you want to mention any news or, or not? Just um, for you to... other other than this, this crypto news from Portugal, I would say that from an immigration perspective, we also have some news. Um, the digital nomad visa entered into force um, later last year. So basically, 2023 will be the first year where we will be having applications and people coming under this type of visa. And it's fantastic news because we had a gap in our legislation. Digital nomads and people working remotely were not covered. We have been working on other types of visa, like the D7 visa for this um, applicants, but the thing is, it was not specific visa, and it, it introduced some um, uncertainty in the process. So now we have a specific visa for um, remote workers, which is fantastic. And yeah, and uh, that's that's, that's, that's pretty much the, all the news. Good. Mm -hmm. And the uh, question also, I wanted to understand more or less if and if I visited Portugal uh, just uh, two weeks ago. The average cost of living in Portugal, if you could say, for uh, renting or now to buy a house, is it true that uh, the prices are increasing a lot? Is, is it difficult nowadays to buy an apartment in Lisbon? What would you What would you say? Yeah, I, I must admit that the Portuguese market it's still very high, uh, and we have not see uh, the process going down. And we don't foresee that to happen uh, in, the, in the near future, which from a perspective of people trying to purchase and leasing property in Portugal may be, um, let's call it, the challenging part of the relocation. Because other than that, the cost of living in Portugal is really low when compared to most of all other European uh, countries. From an investment uh, an investor per perspective it is very good news so everyone who have acquired property in portugal for in investment purposes is really happy uh, with the results so far so yeah it's, it's a good investment because i heard also that the prices are increasing so buying a house now in lisbon we can say almost for sure that it's a good investment even in terms yeah. of when you you were a sell um Regarding the NHR, mm -hmm. mm, let's say that uh, I am a person, uh, I am ready to move today. Mm -hmm. How long do I need to wait to to start uh, and to get like the NIF, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, is the identification exactly. number. Yeah. How, how would it take in terms how of the time? process works? Okay, so the, the first thing we need to establish is if the applicant is an European citizen or a non-European citizen, okay? This is 
this is a game changer. If you are a European citizen, the process is very easy. You have the right to live in Portugal. So basically, you can start, uh, you can travel to Portugal and start your relocation process here. So basically, uh, we can count on three to four days to get you a tax number. Um, then you need to find accommodation in Portugal, a lease agreement that will depend, of course, on your choices and your requirements. Um, and you need to do a registration with the immigration authorities, uh, attesting that you are a European citizen and you move to Portugal. So let's consider around one month to get it done. Okay. After that, you can immediately apply for the NHR. You don't have to wait any longer. And the application process would take you around another one or two weeks. Okay. okay. So let's say in one and a half, two months, you can be properly, properly uh, established in a... Exactly. And if you are a non European citizen, that was my question. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the process will be, of course, longer um, because if you want to reside in Portugal, you should apply for a residency visa in the country of origin. Um, for oh, that exactly. application, you will already need a tax number, you will already need proof of accommodation in Portugal, a bank account. So, everything you will basically need to live here will have to be already settled before you apply for the visa. So does it mean that, let's say I'm from uh, Canada, mm -hmm. before moving to Portugal, I, I need to get uh, to go to the embassy and get a, the permit, the visa, is it visa? correct? Exactly. And to and apply for that visa, you already have to have proofs that you have things in Portugal established, allowing you to live here. Hmm. In, in, irrespective of the type, the type of visa you will be applying, each visa has different requirements. For the D7, you have to prove that you have enough passive income, like ah, so. dividends and so on. If you are a remote worker, you will have to show the cons to the consulate that you have enough income from that activity. Mm -hmm. On top of all of that, you already have to have a tax number, the NIF, the bank account, and all of those practical uh, <laughs> matters dealt with. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. in this case, the procedures, how long would it take more or less? Maybe it's not. it should uh, take you around two months to get a visa. This is being optimistic, okay? Sometimes the consulates mm -hmm. take longer, sometimes it is quicker, but let's say two, two months to actually get the visa and travel to Portugal. Uh, and when you travel to Portugal, the, the process is not completed. You will have to attend um, an appointment with the immigration office to show everything again and to show that actually you have um, also start residing in Portugal and apply for a residency card. So depending on the immigration office uh, schedule and everything else, it can take from six to eight months um, to get it all uh, complete. Completed. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So um, this regime, as we understand, is more the real benefit uh, uh, is for like uh, as we call it nowadays digital nomads like let's say i have a business online mm -hmm. i sell video courses or whatever consultancy mm -hmm. i can uh, benefit more on the contrary let's let's say that i work for a company that i am italian mm -hmm. I work for a company in germany as an mm -hmm. employee mm -hmm. there is no way to to relocate in portugal and uh, live in Portugal and do a contract with the German company, as we were discussing also previously. We yeah. cannot, in this case, stay to 0%. It, it is, yeah. So basically, under the NHR, um, there is a common misunderstanding related to what is the source of income and what is the paying entity. So the paying entity can be in Germany, but if you are working from Portugal, um it may um, mean that this income is portuguese sourced okay from the moment you are providing your activities from portugal and not from germany imagine you never go to germany you never visit the german branch um you never visit your clients in italy so you <laughs> are in fact working from portugal and in that case it's not correct um, to apply the 20 percent rate the most correct under the nhr 
should be um, applying the 20% rate if the activity is illegible. A different case is, imagine you have your family in Portugal and you have a real work contract in Germany and you travel from Monday to Friday to Germany to work, you come back during the weekends. In that case, you can be um, tax resident in Portugal in NHR, you have employment income from Germany, you pay taxes on, in Germany, and in Portugal, you will be exempt. That's very important. Okay. Thank you, because exactly we have some a lot of people who contact us. They want they mm -hmm. have a high a high salary, mm -hmm. but is it is still a salary, so it is not an activity yeah. uh, like a business owner. And uh, so in this case, um, we can uh, affirm that uh, you will pay the twenty percent, and it's a risk to. I mean, you cannot benefit. To, uh, well, uh, an exemption. The exemption on salary income exemption will only apply if the people effectively pay taxes abroad. Okay, so if you are moving for looking for a tax benefit, if you keep the exact same tax on your salary, there is no tax advantage. So it's, exactly it's, it's, in this case, advisable. yeah. In this case, so, Portugal is not uh, the the best. Yeah, it's, best place. it's an option if you want to restructure your sources of income. If you are considering to starting something new, um, or or even there are some cases where the twenty percent is still very good. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly, exactly. Uh, last question would be the Portugal because you mentioned the whitelist countries, no? Mm -hmm. But if I open a, for instance, an, L an LLC mm -hmm. in the USA or in Canada and I get dividends mm -hmm. um, and they live in Portugal, so in this case, uh, they are exempted. The, the, the tax authorities in Portugal, they are not going to, to check uh, actually, I mean, uh, it's not a problem to open a company even not in Europe, but uh, in any anywhere in the world. It's not a problem to have a company anywhere in the world. Um, when clients sometimes ask, where is the best place to start a company? I typically reply to them that there is no best, such thing as best place. You should incorporate a company where your business actually makes sense. Um, the only thing is the exemption on dividends from blacklisted countries would not apply. So if you uh, incorporate a company in Canada or the US, um, the exemption applies. But if you choose Panama or the Cayman Islands or other blacklisted jurisdictions, your dividends would not be exempt under the NHR and a tax rate of 35% would apply instead. Mm. Okay, so you we, we, we cannot choose a blacklist. But in general, would you advise opening? Let's let's say this the same example with an Italian, mm -hmm. but, uh, owing as a business owner, mm -hmm. be more safe. Would you advise to open a company like uh, in uh, Romania or UK compared to USA? It is not is not so different for the tax authorities in Portugal. Uh, where, no. where from where you receive the dividends? No, um, to be uh, completely transparent. When you submit a tax return, you inform the Portuguese tax authorities of the country of where the company is domiciled or registered, um, meaning it should be the, the country of source of your dividends, and you report the amount of dividends and if there has been or has not been any tax paid there. The exemption should apply automatically because the tax system nowadays, it's a huge machine running programs and it's automatic. However, the tax authorities always have the possibility of choosing your tax return to be um, audited. And in that case, they may ask you, uh, please provide us evidence that your company in Romania or your company in the US has any substance there. So where does this dividend come from? And in that case, it becomes very important for you to show uh, exactly what you have uh, in terms of substance, in terms of activity, um, who is managing this business abroad and everything else. So that's in this case, of course, in case of auditing, uh, that's a different story. Yeah, and exactly. uh, in general, uh, can you also assist uh, Raquel 
the, the client in case of auditing, in case of those? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. That's the benefit of having a lawyer. You can go from A Ex to Z during <laughs> all the process. Um, exactly. And when we are even in the preliminary stages, we always have in mind the, the worst case scenario because we know exactly what can happen. Uh, again, and therefore it's a good idea. <laughs> It's, it's better to to play in advance than, yeah, uh, exactly. than to to have some uh, to do some mistakes that in this case can cost a lot of money as we know exactly. Exactly. okay thank you very much Raquel, for your time and for uh, those uh, important information and uh, for all of you guys who are watching this video i will uh, leave in the description uh the email of Raquel and the linkedin uh, profile link so in case you want to ask her more questions on you want to start the procedure uh, with her you can uh, they can contact you via the, the email that uh, we have uh, correct Raquel? they can text you an email okay thank you very much thank you again Raquel and uh, Fausto Carnevale here from SNTAXA see you next time